I'm quite particular about what I write. And when it's written, that's all it is. I get feedback on, you know, lines of dialogue and, you know, the action and the you know, sequence of events. And, you know, I use it to, you know, shape the, f the script into something better. Yeah. What works on the page won't always work when you're on set or when you're in the editing room. And when it gets to that point, you have no choice but to look around you and say, guys, what can we do to make this better? And I always had Jace there or Alana there to say, here's what I can do or here's what they should do. And I found that extremely helpful because as I was so busy, not just you know, directing the film, making sure what was on the page was on the screen, you know, getting the lighting together, making sure the crew was there and fed and making sure I still had money left in the bank. Um, sometimes it was a bit much for me to consider all the things that you know, Jason and Alana had to do and other actors as well. Mm. And I love the fact that most of the, people in my, most of the people in my film are so capable that I could leave them to their own devices and I could trust them if I said, look, I need a little more from this or I need something else, give it to me. Mm -hmm. I could just say, when you're ready, and they would, they would bring it. And I thought, that's better than anything I could have suggested. And that's, I think it's so important to cast the right people. Yeah. And I really feel like I did that in this film. It was my sheer luck. <laughs> but sometimes... It was just, it was a combination of luck, talent, mm. and just running out of time. <laughs> oh, so much. Like, being, I think being put with that amount of pressure that we needed to get so much done in yeah. one night that I think Alana and I just sort of knew, like, we just knew that we had to basically have everything learned, know exactly what we were doing, because... If we didn't, it would be just letting down the entire team, and that's kind of how we work. We worked as yeah, we did work. It was a good a team. team, and um, it was a very emotionally draining, <laughs> like so a lot of anger, a lot of a lot of grief, <laughs> <laughs> and just getting to that point in every scene. The thing what we loved most about Tom is that he let us get there, and he just. Basically, when we were ready, we would tell him, just go, action, let's do this. And then we would just go straight into the scene. And you, some, most of the time, when we had finished that scene, we would just say, let's go again. Let's quickly just go into it. Because we were there. We knew exactly where we were in our emotional state. And we could just keep putting it down until Tom knew that he had gotten... I love the, the, um, I love the process that a lot of actors go through. Alana and Jace have their own... They have songs they listen to to get to a certain state of mind yeah. to bring the emotions forth. And I guess at that point, it's mm. better to leave them, leave them on their own and let, let them get there. It, it's better than me kind of going in and saying, okay, guys, you know, five minutes, come on. Um, mm. it's, it's not worth it if what they're trying to accomplish, they're going to bring to the film and make it better. That's better than a deadline. It's better than running out of time. Yeah. And there were times where we did run out of time <laughs> and things yeah. like that. And those, those last few nights in the prison, we were on such a tight schedule, we were. but those elements were so important. Mm. We didn't want to rush them, so mm. I, 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 I really didn't feel we had a choice. It was either, you know, rush through it and have a very subpar product, mm. or take the time, let them do their thing, let them yeah. act, let them be what they're born to be, and make the film better. Yeah. And to me, that's not a choice. <laughs> oh, I think the most stressful time was, yeah, the final night when we knew that the prison was closing. Yeah. We knew we had to get out. We were, there was a point where it was our final night uh, shooting inside Paramount Correctional Center. And it was the very, very end of the film, like the very last scene. We, we were shooting that very thing last. <laughs> and we were five minutes away from being kicked out, but we still had like a few shots to do. We did. Me, Jace, Alana, and I think, was it Matt recording sound? Uh, yeah. It would, it would have been Matt or Adrian or someone. It was just the four of us manning the camera sound and these two on, 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 at the shot. Everyone else, packing shit up. Mm. Tripods, the jib, the dolly, yeah. everything, everything. Getting everything out of the prison. <laughs> wow. so, we did, so we didn't have more to yeah. do when we finally finished. And when we finally called cut, we just had to leg it. <laughs> we did. We just had to leave because... Honestly, there was one more, the last shot that we shot at that prison was me... There's a scene where Alexis is running in the, through the prison trying yeah. to find Lacey, and that was just all hand. Like it was we, just, all, we just had no well, time to set up anything. We're just like done, yeah. move on. While done. we were leaving, <laughs> we were just like, quick, we'll just quickly just yeah. keep <laughs> running and be doing this. Yeah, pretty and much. Then we sh cut, we're done. It's in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to do? <laughs> oh god, it's very stressful. Uh, but you know, we got it done. 
We've, yeah. got, we've got it done. Just find how stressful it may have been. <laughs> and when it comes to times like that, the actors and the, everyone on set needs to know exactly what they're doing. And I feel like at that point, we were a very tight-knit group. We knew exactly what our place was mm. on set. They knew what they're doing. They knew the lines. They knew the action. I knew the shots I needed. So it was just like done. The, all of us would just shift to the next thing. Yeah. The, hardly a beat. And it was like, all right, looks good. Okay, action done. The biggest challenges when filming leads me astray. You have quite a fair few. I, I think the bane of our existence, for a lot of the time, especially when we're shooting exterior scenes, the generator. The generator. The fucking generator. This was <laughs> temperamental. <laughs> I bought a generator for the film. It cost me seven hundred dollars. It was it was a silent generator, so we could f set up lights in the prison, set up lights at the farm, and you know, you know, have good lighting for mm. when we're shooting in these in these locations that we would have literally no light. Yeah. So it arrives, and we start trying to use it, and then we realize. It's not very silent, is it? No. No, it's not very silent. You know, when you say silent, you think, you know, quiet. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't very quiet. So we thought, okay, that's a bit annoying. We'll just have to stage it a long way away from the microphones and use a lot of extension cables. But okay, that's not, that's not a deal breaker. I already spent, I can't buy another one. We have no money for that. This will be fine. The generator then proceeds. <laughs> To just be, you know how if you're on a plane and there's a really annoying child right behind you? It was like that. When you wanted it to do something, it wouldn't. If you wanted it to shut up, it wouldn't. Times when we needed it to be quiet, it would be really loud. Mm. Times when we needed it to, you know, work, it didn't. Oh, yeah. The, w the worst time, you weren't even there for the worst time. Oh, no, I wasn't there, <laughs> but I can definitely tell you. And Finances Creek. It. Yeah. We rolled up the generator because this, yeah. is, this is the time where we really needed it. You know, it was out in the farm, no power outlets or anything. Yeah. We needed it. We needed it for light. We were scheduled to start shooting from 6 p.m. and finish at 10 p.m. Because we, like, uh, we had like one or two scenes and we had quite a large cast at that point. Um, on the set we had, I think, one, two, three, four, like four, six, six characters. <laughs> six characters all in this location. And that was larger than other scenes we'd done up to that point. Mm. So we wanted it to keep, keep it very professional and on schedule as possible because one of our actors, young Addy Craig, who was brilliant, can't speak highly enough of him. He was on set, but we needed to get him, you know, his scene done, shot so we could go home. And the generator just decided to be a total dick and it would not turn on. This is a time mm. where we really needed the generator to work and it just would not turn on. Yeah. We blame Adrian because he was the one who was setting it up. And we feel like, did he spill the petrol? Did he spill oh, the oil? Something to it. Something. But no matter what we tried, yeah. the thing just would not turn on. Hours passed and we tried to work our way around it. And we eventually used a generator that Finances Creek had. Now it was even less silent than the silent generator we had. It wasn't even marketed as a silent generator. It was just a generator. So we ended up hiding it inside this large concrete tube. Because the Finances Creek Farm is also a horse jumping. Um, facility and so they had these these like fences and concrete tubes so we put the generator inside this tube and put it hundreds of meters away mm. and so the light itself came as far as it could um, with the extension cord getting as close as possible still really far away to make up for that we turned it to the highest point which just made the generator louder it was like nothing we did would work so what we ended up doing Turning it down slightly, so we got a, a passable light around the general area, and the scene itself had a campfire in the middle. If we didn't have that campfire in the script, the scene would not have worked. But luckily, the campfire gave us that extra bit of light just to make it passable. Mm. And so we we got the we got the scene done after hours and hours. Went way over, went way over schedule, but we got it done. And when I went home that night, I was just like, that was the worst. And it was, it was ter not only terrible because of that, but that mm -hmm. night had already been rescheduled because of rain. We were supposed to shoot the previous night, but we had to cancel it because it was, was going to rain. Everything was. Yeah. And that whole night, we thought it was going to rain again. <laughs> mm. It was just, it was an awful, awful shoot. But everyone stayed really professional. Mm. Everyone stayed on task. Even the kids. It, it, it wasn't just um, Addy. We also had another um, a young character, a girl that was played by Paige. And she was... 
she just hasn't done a lot of acting before, but she was great. Mm -hmm. And you know, other actors who we hadn't worked with before, but they were very understanding. They knew that kind of stuff happened on indie yeah. films. And for Nancy's Creek, like they gave us their generator to use, which was really, really helpful. You know, we dr drive up and like several cars, all this equipment, start unloading it. It's not a small imposition. We're asking to kind of take over their estate for the night. And they were very supportive and very helpful. Yeah. And when things go wrong like that, you need to have those people around you. If you've sort of given yourself a crew or cast that you don't work with together, that kills the film. Mm. It kills the scene. It kills the shoot. It was fall apart. Yeah. And so that wasn't that was the first time the Jenner really gave us a problem. Then it happened again when we were shooting inside Parramatta for the, the first prison. time. We were shooting inside Parramatta for the first night. That prison is really dark. So you would <laughs> it's be. It's a prison. Yeah. It's dark. <laughs> you will be filming. All the lights will be on. Filming. Everything going smoothly. Generator fails. You're just in plunged into complete darkness. And then everyone's phones just ran Everyone just on because that's all we had. <laughs> like, we had another light attached to the uh, camera purely out of necess necessity because we knew the generator was going to screw mm. up. And it did several times. We've got footage of when we're in the middle of a shoot and suddenly it just goes black and yeah. everyone's like, oh, generator. So that first night we ended up sacking the generator and <laughs> we're asking the security guards the only power outlets that worked within the prison, because the whole thing's you know, deconditioned, doesn't work, there's no power there. But in the office, there was a, where you know, people go if they need to, and there's power there. So we hooked up, mm. <laughs> we bought a lot of extension cords. So we hooked up this one extension cord and several just kind of snaked its way from the beginning of the prison into the chamber we were in and up through a staircase into the, the cell block we were in. So we just used that for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. I got a call the next day saying, yeah, you can't do that from the Parramatta, like the council saying like, we're not, that's power, that's money you're using. And I was like, I'm so sorry, we'll fix the generator. We didn't. Instead, we just got another generator from a friend of mine, uh, Leighton, who did special effects on the film. I've been making movies with him for, for years and years. Uh, my my very, very first horror movie was made with him in year nine in Gats. It was called Blood, about a killer teddy bear. And our second film was called Gore, which was a, an hour long slash film. It was great fun. Mm. And then we were, into a, film, a zombie film called Guts, you know, Blood, Gore and Guts. We were teenagers. But you know, he and I go, go back away. He, he's one of my best friends. Yeah. And uh, so we were making movies forever. So I knew I had to get him on this. Great guy too. <laughs> like, what a so guy. <laughs> he's a very deadpan way of so assessing situations. <laughs> he's so funny. Yeah, so, so yeah. So his dad um, and his brother-in-law work at a camp mm. and they, you know, sometimes they need a generator. So I went up to Graham, Leighton's, uh, Leighton's dad, and I said, Graham, need a generator. He was like, you got it. It wasn't silent, but it was more than, more than enough. We just hooked up several extension cables and sacked our mm. original $700 generator. Yeah. And then, <laughs> once film filming's done, the generator was stolen. Someone stole it from our apartment building because it was down in the garage. Someone stole a bike and our generator. And I was just like, good luck with that, dude. Good riddance. Good, <laughs> take, take it. <laughs> I hope it bites you in the ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. So, so, yeah. I think just feel, yeah, exactly right. Besides the generator, it was, I mean, there were different problems, especially there was one time in Parramatta. I can't remember what we forgot. We forgot We something. forgot the cream sauce light. That's right. Had to send Sarah back. And we, all the uh, way to the Central Coast and grab it. Because, yeah, I just... <laughs> that was the worst. This is so, much, felt equipment so, bad. so much equipment. So much equipment. So far to go. Yeah, from Parramatta to yeah, Central Coast. It felt so bad. And back. Oh well. But as far as in independent films go, there's always going to be problems like that. Exactly. You know, other problems to do with not enough money or equipment failure. Yeah. Or just if, things like that, or things don't go quite your way. Yeah. You take it in stride. Oh, for and sure. And <laughs> if you have an indie film that runs smoothly during production you were the luckiest son and of the world. for the most part we did. And we did it was relatively smooth it could yeah. have been so much worse could have been bad. for what it was yeah. but <laughs> i feel really lucky yeah. <laughs> it's like the generator was our biggest problem a few other things but all in all we had a relatively smooth it was principal photography I, I just, oh, thank christ <laughs> could have been so much worse when my when my brother made a feature film in 2011 called sick and he made that for five thousand dollars and I really respected how he did that. He shot it, it was just in our house. It was just uh, a film about a bunch of teenagers having a party. Very clerks, 
Breakfast Club, American Pie kind of deal. You know, very, quite vulgar, but very funny, very honest, very heartfelt. And I, I love what he did because Nick, Nick was always more of a Kevin Smith, you know, John Hughes kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I was always more John Carpenter, Dario Argento. But we always helped each other on our films. So when he was making his film, I learned a lot in terms of budgeting, um, you know, buying pizza every night to feed everyone, which I know, does Lana still not eat pizza? I don't know. We had so <laughs> We got much. a lot, we got sick of pizza. Yeah. And his, his shoot was, again, about a month, maybe, maybe five weeks. You know, he scheduled it really well. I was shooting pretty much every night. And by the time, when the time came for me to shoot my film, I was like, all right, he had $5,000. I'll get $10,000. I'll go to cameras twice as good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, were, we were very, we were rivals a lot. And uh, all throughout schooling and making films together, we'd always try to outdo each other in anything we did. So I thought, okay, when I make my film, I'm gonna make it twice, you know, twice as much money. Camera's gonna be twice as good. All that kind of stuff, locations up to Wazoo. And when it came down to it, I, he, he needed his $5,000 to rent his camera and his equipment. He spent almost no money when it came to actual production. Mm -hmm. Catering, yes. Locations, nothing. Didn't need it. Costumes, nothing. Didn't need it. He cut corners everywhere. It was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> My film, however, I got the equipment for free. So the $10,000 I had went towards things that I needed to get, like costumes, props, that mask there. <laughs> things I really needed to kind of put up to the next level and, and location fees, things like that. Because some locations cost you know, hundreds to thousands of dollars to actually film that over mm -hmm. the, you know, the Parramatta Correctional Center, Maitland, yeah. Maitland Jail, yeah, yeah. it all added up. So, and I really wanted to make it on my own with my own $10,000 that I made myself, because that's what my brother did. I didn't want to crowdfund because he thought that was stupid. And if I did that, that meant my film wasn't as good as his. That <laughs> makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, right? Yeah, 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 if well. you have a brother, you understand. To be completely honest, Marketing isn't something I focused on. I took, you know, I had public relations, advertising, marketing courses when I was in university. It's always struck me as an area of the industry that makes me want to just, you know, shoot me, shoot myself. And it's, when I was looking through textbooks on advertising and stuff, oh, let me quote you one of my university textbooks about advertising. Mm. It's not enough for you to succeed. Others must fail. And I thought, that's awful. Film isn't like that. At least I don't want it to be like that. No. And on the asset, it may appear as though that's the case. Films, some films are successful, some films are moderately, and moder moderately successful, and some films disappear and never seen of again. But sometimes that's only for a while. Some films take a while to find their audiences. I think this is the difference. With ads, uh, you know, commercials, things like that, they can die quickly and no one will remember them. They don't mean a thing. Mm. And like, successful ad campaigns, you know, people remember them, like the... Apple silhouette dancing thing, like people remember that. Yeah. And you know, the Cadbury Gorilla. Yeah. That's funny. Exactly. But you know, so many ads just wither and die because they don't mean anything. No. And some people liken that to the film industry. You know, some people make a film and it dies and it means nothing. I disagree. Films can be made and make no money and flop, but they can find an audience. Mm. Some of the films that are now regarded as the greatest films ever made mm, cult films. Donnie Darko, Blade Runner, John yeah. Carpenter's The Thing. They made almost no money when they were released, yep. but they took their time and they found the audience. Yeah. And so they didn't die, they didn't, f they didn't fall apart. Mm. It just took them a bit of time. So I don't think- And they're still remembered. And yeah. they're still remembered. So I don't think the, the concept of it's not enough for you to succeed, others must fail. That's wrong. No. You can succeed, others can too. You don't have to fail. Sometimes that's not how it works. Sometimes people, yes, they do fail. Our film might fail, but I'm not thinking about that. But I don't like to think of this, of the industry as something that's so cutthroat because all the people I know in this industry are so supportive and they want to help their friends and they want to help colleagues get their film out there and they want to help finance it, they want to help distribute it, they want to help mm. people, they want to help get it seen. It's a very, it's, it's more of a community than a business or a business infrastructure. And I think it's that kind of thinking of helping people in your industry yeah. and you know, supporting their film. If you, know, you scratch their back, they'll scratch yours. More people can see it. It's everyone wins. No one mm. has to fail, even if it's so low budget. Mm. It can still make that. And so when I read that in that university textbook, I thought, I don't want to live in that world. <laughs> I, want to, I want everyone to, at least, to have at least a little bit of time in the spotlight. And even if their film does fail, it can still mean something to them. As anyone will tell you, the industry is changing and has changed so much over the last, over the last few years. Um, 
there was a point where there was only one avenue to get a cinema release. You know, this is back in the, in the 20th century where you had a budget, you maybe got a limited yeah. release, you know, larger films got a larger release. It was very much like that. But since the advent of a lot of digital um, technology and digital cameras and things like that, more and more people are finding that they can make a film on a semi-professional level and have it find an audience. And I find that very, um, both great and wonderful and inspirational, but it also means you've got a lot more people to compete with. But that's exciting to me. <laughs> that means great competition. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it spurs, at least, I don't know about you, but it spurs me to do better. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, definitely, yeah. yeah. And more and more people are finding different avenues to release their films. Some people release them free on torrent sites just to kind of get it out there, make, make, it, make it find a large audience, and hopefully they can recoup um, some of their budget from like DVD sales if people want to buy it. Yeah. Um, some people get a limited release, some people take it on tour o over a country, like when Kevin Smith released Red State, he took it, he, he toured it by himself, he, he released it himself, and mm. you know, did Q&A sessions, things like that. Yep. That's something I'd love to do, I'd love to go on tour with the film, <laughs> do Q&A sessions. It would, it would be something. That'd that be great. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I mean, I'm thinking realistically, I'm not thinking, oh, this film's going to open in every cinema in Australia. I, I'm not thinking that. Not even great, big Australian films do that. <laughs> no. But if I can get it to a point where it's seen at a few cinemas and seen at film festivals and then builds up at least a small audience and then people look, uh, more people look into it and they want to download it on iTunes or something like that or you know, video on demand as you said. Yeah. Things like that. Just the more people see it, the happier I'll be. If I can make money from it, that'd be great because you know, I need to eat. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> when Wormwood was just released, this has just happened, you know, Wormwood has, was like one of the most high, highest torrented sites on that weekend. Yeah. And it's a small little Australian yeah, independent yeah. film was one of the most highly torrented s films, films yeah. on, on, on the web. That's great in a lot of ways because a lot of people wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. But they also need to eat. They need to see their budget back. People, and if they want people to keep going on this in, in this industry yeah. and putting all their time and effort and love and money into projects like this, they need to see something in return. Yeah. It's lovely to say, oh, the money doesn't matter, it's just the art. That's true, but we need to see something. Yeah. And I try not to torrent pretty much at all. If there's a film I can buy or rent, I'm a blockbuster, blockbuster all the time. Mm. I know the manager there, it's how we're going to roll the film. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, rent, I'm always renting stuff. And it's just so much more rewarding to know you've rented a film, bought a film, and something has gone back to the people who made it. Because mm. seeing as I'm in the situation, I'm like, I want people to rent my films. Mm. If someone saw it for free, if they like it, that's great, but that doesn't give anything to me, aside from kind of gratification that they wanted to see it. And that, like I said, is rewarding, yeah. but it's gotten to a point where they need, they need more than that. And mm. so, I'm not sure, man. <laughs> but I think film, like the film festival circuit, it's definitely where this film is Oh, heading. yeah, it's, it's where we're going to um, put it. We have a few in mind. We actually know a couple of... Oh, yeah, we've got, we've got a few lined up already. Definitely. And um, I think when we send it there, I think that's just when we will probably be looking for distribution yep, around the circuit, see who's interested. Like just that. A lot of Q&As as well. I yeah, reckon definitely. we could easily do that around Love the circuit that. and also just get people's business cards and just keep working at yeah. trying to make this film what it just... What, what it could be. What it, it should, should be. And what it should be. <laughs> we want to take it as far as possible. But we're also looking at the whole film realistically. We know it's a low budget film. We know that it has no big stars or anything behind it. Mm -hmm. But it has a lot of passion behind it. Yeah. And it has a lot of creativity. And I think it can work. Mm, definitely. I, and I think people want to see it. I think people would, would like it. And I'm glad that I think that because I don't want to have made a film and think, oh, it's not as good as I hoped. Oh, I wish it was like this. I really like my film. I really like what, what I really like Jason. I love Alana. I love everyone who put everything in their heart and soul who, who came and helped me. Mm. I love them for it, and I want to see their their efforts rewarded. Jason didn't get paid. I didn't get. I lost money. I spent ten thousand of my own dollars to see to have people spend money to buy a ticket to see it. That would mean mm. the world to me. Yeah. Just to show that I didn't do it for nothing, mm. and to show that people are willing to pay money because. I think in the creative arts industry, a lot of people take it for granted. If we didn't have art, I think so much of our society would just collapse. It's good to have your know, business and industry and all that kind of crap. Yeah. We need art. And yeah. we need artists to be able to support themselves. So many other occupations and stuff wouldn't exist. <laughs> if you said to a doctor, yeah, I'll pay you later. Mm. If you said to a lawyer, you know, if they said, you know, 
I'm not getting paid for this, but it'll get me exposure. That's not how those occupations work. And no. we'd like to get it to a point in which, you know, low budget independent filmmakers and actors can make at least a small living <laughs> doing yeah. what they're passionate about. We do what we do. We love what we do. That's the thing. We love doing, like, we just love being in this industry. And, and we, we want to keep doing it. And we want to be able to make bigger, better films and go to a wider audience and yeah. make a film that potentially means something to someone. Mm. Someone watches it and thinks, this speaks to me. Yeah. Or I really like this. This helped me get through a tough time. Or this, this poster looks so cool, I'm going to put it up on my wall. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that really meant something a lot when I was growing up. Mm. You know, when I saw these low-budget films, like and Peter Jackson made Bad Taste. And I, I, I watched that, I was like, I love Peter Jackson. He put so much effort into it. And I got bought it on DVD and I watched Heavenly Creatures and you know, Brain Dead and all these other films and watching him grow as a filmmaker mm. and other independent filmmakers as well, watching them grow and develop and make better films and become more successful and yep. some people think, oh, you know, they don't need anything, they're big filmmakers. They're giving us and we want to give you something to remember, mm. a story that you can look back on and say, that's cool, I can use that in my own life. What, what would that character do? Because... I don't think people, a lot of people realise just how important stories are. Mm. Stories shape us. I mean, in the absolute basic elements of, let's say, religion, they are stories. They are stories who help people live their lives. And, you know, they influence everything they do. Movies are the same, at least to me. They are stories that show yeah. us heroes vanquishing evil or people going up against insurmountable odds, sometimes failing and sometimes winning, but they give us inspiration and they give us meaning. Mm. And something to, to look up to yeah. and that's what really talks to me and if I could make a living <laughs> making films that speak that way to someone that would really mean the world to me I think to survive in the film industry at least in the Australian film industry you need a lot of perseverance and patience oh, yeah. and patience <laughs> yeah there's never going to be a point I don't think in which you're a filmmaker and you think oh I'm set for life that happens yeah. to so, a select few, Spielberg, yeah. Tarantino, a few of those guys. Yeah. For the rest of us, we just have to keep honing our skills and working on our craft and making the next project. And when you mm. finish one, you're like, great, what's next? I don't think there could be a point in which you think, oh, let's take a break for a while. Yeah. You just have to keep doing it and you have yeah. to, it can't just be a, a hobby. Okay, it can't be a hobby, I suppose. But yeah. if you're looking at, as a, looking at it to be your career, it really has to come first in all aspects of your mm. life. You can get, you know, have a wife, have a children, have children, but they have to understand you're a filmmaker. <laughs> mm. There's always going to be the part of you that wants to go and film somewhere exotic and film with brilliant actors and actresses and go off to this mm. remote location that you can't call them for 48 hours. Yeah. And that's going to be something you have to commit to. And in the Australian film industry where a lot of people feel as though there's nothing here and a lot of people move to America and people have asked me are you moving to America and I think I would rather stay here and be someone who builds the Australian film industry to something more viable mm. because people don't like watching Australian films Australians don't like Australian film mm. it, it annoys the hell out of me yeah. people say oh what is this film what is it Australian oh. yeah. people don't think our films count as actual films people think american films they're the only things that count or british mm. films you watch films like shawn of the dead i don't know why i said shawn of the dead it's low budget as well but you know people, <laughs> people in australia watch shawn of the dead they think it's an actual film and it's great i love shawn of the dead yeah and you know, american films like dallas buyers club and mm. the avengers like they're films mm. making a film in australia oh that doesn't count why it's australian we don't mm. make films yeah we do and we do it really well why can't we keep doing that? And so many of the Australian films that you know, are popular, they really pander to be as Australian as possible. Like Red Dog, don't want to say nothing about that film. It's as Australian as one can get. I don't like Red Dog. I think it gives, the main character is American, <laughs> and it gives American people an incredibly reinforced stereotype yeah. about what Australians are like. Why don't we have a more varied ground mm. for Australian films. Why don't we have Australian, we, Australian gangster films, horror films we've got, crime, thriller, romance. Why don't we do more, that more often? Why don't mm. we have a film industry that people can look toward and think, that counts? Why don't we do that? We have 
so much space here in Australia. We're desert. We could build so many studios. Why aren't we doing that? I'm getting angry. <laughs> but because when I was in university, I did a lot of um, research and essays and surveys, mm. asking yeah. people opinions about films and Australian films. And I was dismayed at the amount of people who were like, Australian films are all about the same thing. They have the same characters and they're just boring. And why do American films are so much better? I'm like, we don't make enough. Australia doesn't make enough films to make ourselves viable as an industry. And we yeah. need to make more. And I don't get why we don't get more support mm. from the government or screen Australia. They need to fund so much more. Yeah, they don't seem to like the arts that much. They don't. <laughs> they really don't. If we just got the government or just more people like us to just yeah. make them and release them <laughs> like like the guys from Wormwood they've done a fantastic job mm. at building a film from nothing and getting it yep. somewhere why don't more people do that why don't more students do what I did and just mm. use the equipment from university to make a film exactly. they think they can't but they can if they just do it they just need to have that drive and that passion because if you don't, you might. You, that's why they don't do it. Because Australia is a very apathetic nation. Yeah. We're all very. Oh, it's all right. It should be right. Is yeah. Get it going. Mm. We need more drive. We need yeah. more people who are like, I want to be a filmmaker, and I'm going yeah. to make it happen, and I'm not going to stop until I've got my film in theaters. Because mm. American cinema, it swamps. I mean, we've got. Do what I think is really ironic. Mm. When we have in DVD stores and stuff. Yep. We've got all the like action, like the action section and the horror section, the comedy <laughs> section, and Australian films are in the foreign section. The foreign, yeah. It's like we don't count ourselves as a country. Mm. <laughs> also, there's like an Australian film section. I'm like, why aren't we just in with everyone else? else exactly. Why aren't we just counted as real? Yeah. No one takes us seriously. God. I'll calm down now. <sighs> I think yeah, <laughs> but that's why I think most. Yeah, just indie films don't really get made because most people just don't have that passion to actually get up and say, I'm going to do this. We need more low-budget Australian films. We mm. need more high-budget Australian films. We just need more Australian mm. films. Make them yeah. and so, so people can like them and mm -hmm. view them and buy them so we can make more. And then by the end of it, we'll have an industry that we can yeah. be proud of instead of one where we just look at and think, oh, it's all right. Or even some people are kind of ashamed of it. I don't want to be ashamed of it. I'm proud of what Australia has made in the past, what we're continuing to produce. We should keep that and mm. make it bigger, make exactly. it better. The most important piece of advice is just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Put aside your fears mm. and your doubts and just do it. Because if you, put, if you let, those, let the fear and the doubt, if you let that occupy you, you'll never get anything made. But yeah. by doing it, you'll have something at the end of it. Even if it's not great, even if it's shit, you'll have it and you would have learned something. Then you make the next, the next thing, put aside fear and doubt for that, you would have made something else, yeah. learned something more. Get, get the shitty films out of your way. Everyone's got shitty films. In, I've made shitty films. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I want to make more so I can get that out of me. So when I make something great, it'll be great. Mm. So if you just keep pressing forward and don't let fear guide you, let yeah. the passion guide you let love guide you let like let my love open the door in the words of pete townsend <laughs> yeah. just 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 do it i went to a a q a session with tom savini i love tom savini mm. he's a special effects makeup artist on dawn of the dead a lot of george aramo movies at creep show yeah. he directed the, the 1990s version of night of the living dead he's a hero of mine i love the guy mm. and in newtown i went to a, a screening of the 1978 dawn of the dead and this is before i was even this is when I was writing uh, Leave Me Astray. And he was doing a Q&A session and I put my hand up and I was like, what, what advice do you have for aspiring filmmakers and actors? And he was like, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's always stayed with me. And he was like, so what are you, a filmmaker or an actor? You look like an actor. I was like, no, I'm not an actor. Yeah. But I told him about the fact that I had a real low budget but a dedicated cast and crew like, in the line. And he was like, just do it, man, mm -hmm. do it. And I was like, I will. I will, Tom Savini. I will make my film for you. And... That's always stayed with me, the fact that this guy who had found success yeah. still was just like, do it, man, that could be great. Seeing that enthusiasm and the passion that he had for not just film, but independent film, because that's yeah. where he came from, and that's what he's worked on, and, that's, and he's always been surrounded by that his entire life. Mm -hmm. feeling like he's been on the fringe like, with horror films. You know, people, uh, horror films don't like those, but 
within the circle of the horror community, he's a god. Mm. And to have someone like that tell me, you should make your film, that meant the world to me. Yeah. So don't get discouraged no. by saying, oh, I don't have a great camera. Exactly. I don't have this or that. Just do it. It doesn't matter. Just do it.